friends. I'm Holly. Thank you for being here. I hope you're all doing well. So before we jump into the lesson, I wanted to just give a brief introduction. This lesson is actually something that I created a couple of years ago for another project. And in this lesson, my creative process is a little bit different from what I typically do. So typically, I don't really have much of an intention or a plan. And I just, you know, dive into my piece and let things unfold as I move throughout the piece. But for the painting in this lesson, I actually did start out with an intention and somewhat of a plan. So I want to say that if you're creating intuitively, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have an intention or you can't have a plan. For me, what it means is that when you create intuitively, you're not going to hold so tightly to that plan, to that initial plan or that initial intention. You're going to, you know, use that as a guide, but you're still going to be open for changes that may come up, shifts in the process, new ideas, and you're just going to be open to that. So I think this is actually a really good way, this lesson is a good way to practice creating intuitively with an intention. So in the lesson, you'll see that my intention was to embody in the painting a feeling of the things that help me feel most alive or help me feel um, really things that are part of my self-care routine, I guess is a good way to say it. So you'll see that I create a list of things, of people, of places, of objects, of memories experiences that help me feel the most alive in life, help me feel the most grounded, um, the happiest, help me feel like the best version of myself. And then I turn those things into symbols that I can incorporate into my painting as narrative elements in the hopes that that gives my painting, you know, a, a feeling of those things, a reminder of those things that help me to feel good. So that's another way in which I think this lesson will help us create intuitively because it's helping us to identify those things that help us feel alive. And when we incorporate that into our paintings, then our paintings feel more like us and they feel more alive. So I want you to know that this is not a lesson where you are trying to, you know, to create, recreate the painting that I'm creating. This is a lesson where you're going to create in your own voice. Your words are going to be different than mine. Your symbols are going to be different than mine. So I really want this to be, you know, a painting for you that feels very personal to you and feels unique to you. And I also want to say there's there's no supply list. You can use the supplies that you already have, the ones that feel best to you. So choose the supplies that you love to use, the colors that you love to use. Because, again, that's going to help the piece feel more like it's unique to you. All right, so as you're watching the lesson, if any questions pop up, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer. And if you want to post your piece in the Facebook group over on Artist Magic page, that would be great. I'd love to see it. If you post it on Instagram, I'd love to see it. And actually, if you want to um, follow my art in other places, I'm on Instagram. I'll put my account name up on the screen. And you can also find me over on my YouTube channel. I've got some tutorials and stuff over there that I'd love for you to check out. So if you search Holly McLaughlin Art over on YouTube, my channel should pop up. All right, I hope you enjoy the lesson. So I'm starting out with a sheet of 15 by 20 inches watercolor paper, and it is a thicker paper, it's 140 pounds. 
what we're going to be doing is reflecting on things that we feel are important for our self-care. So this could be sort of the typical self-care things that you think about that are part of your daily routine, or it could be people that you feel good around, environments that you feel good in, places that you like to visit. So anything that you feel like contributes to your overall mental well-being or physical well-being, we're going to go through and, and make ourselves a list of those particular things. And this is going to be a way for us to honor the ways in which we take care of ourselves. And we're going to pull from from the list that we make and create some symbols. And then we'll weave those symbols into our painting. And then that will give us something that we can come back to and look at and remind us of the things that make us feel good. I think something that's really important for me is my home. My home is my sanctuary. I really enjoy decorating my home and rearranging things. And I'm a homebody. So I'm going to put home as one of my things. And then along with that, family. So I am an introvert, homebody. I like spending time at home with my family. That is something that makes me feel comfortable and safe and feel good. Another thing I like to do is take care of my house plants. I'm going to put down plants. I have, oh my gosh, I think I have over 40 house plants. So definitely that's something that feels good to me to bring some of nature inside and to take care of those. And so that leads me to think about nature. Being out in nature is something that feels good to me and is a way that I take care of my both mental and physical well-being. Getting out and walking in nature is, is good for both. That also makes me think that I really love spending time in the mountains. That's an environment I really love to be in, and especially if I'm near some water in the mountains, so like a mountain, river, or stream. And then water would also include like taking a hot bath. So some of these things we could sort of combine into one maybe when we're thinking of symbols. And remember, your list is going to be different. The things that feel good to me may not feel good to you. So your list is going to be completely different, which means your symbols are going to be different and your painting is going to be different. And that's that's completely fine. I want this to be a more intuitive project and a more individualized project. So I want this to, to really fit you and your story. So feel free to you know put completely different things than I'm putting and use completely different colors and that sort of thing. Okay. Okay, another thing for me would be reading. I really love self-help books, so that, that fits in well. And then, of course, art. You know, you can't forget art and the creative process. I'm going to put that as well. Another thing that I want to do while I'm gathering some ideas, gathering some words, gathering ideas for marks, I want to take a look through some of my sketchbooks. Oops, let me grab those. I want to take a look through some of my sketchbooks and see, you know, what sort of symbols have I already been using that when I look at those make me think of, you know, taking care of myself and, and well-being. So I want to just quickly flip through. I'm just quickly looking for you know, particular marks or symbols. So like here, I've drawn a house and I've written home. And so I'm just going to kind of jot this down. And remember, this is our first, this is our first layer. We're just gathering ideas and marks. And so wherever you put it on your paper is fine. It's probably not going to show up in the end or just bits and pieces may. Moon, I know I do like a moon pretty frequently in my paintings. I'll often do, I'm just going to kind of quickly sketch this right here. I'll do a face and then do some symbols beside the face. Plants, there you go. So plants in nature. So if I incorporated a plant, I might want to do something like that. Again, I've drawn a home. I do these sort of marks on top of the head often as well. Jot that down. I do a lot of these little tick marks, hash marks. Moon again. I'm going to write moon down on my list. 
Here you can see how I do heads with these sort of marks beside them. And, you know, that's a symbol that I, I use frequently, but I don't really know what it means, but it feels good to do that. So I'm going to include that in my possibility of marks that I might use on this painting. I like doing sort of these splotchy dots. So I'm just going to kind of make a few on the page. So that it reminds me more of those tick marks. So a ladder. I know a lot of people, a lot of artists use this symbol of a ladder in their paintings, or at least I, I seem to come across it in other people's work frequently. The ladder to me means the ability to bring yourself up out of something. It has this uplifting quality to me, so I'm going to put ladder. That might be a symbol that I want to incorporate. I'm just going to quickly sketch one on here. Remember, this is just, we're gathering our marks. We're going to paint over this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of it. When I've finished writing down my words and my drawing out some symbols, I'm going to take a picture of it so that I can look back at it while I'm painting. And it will be a reminder to me of what symbols I might want to include as I go along. But this is a good way to get into the piece, to get started, sort of like a warm up. And it gets something down on the paper so that we're not just starting with blank white piece of paper. Okay, so I'm going to keep going there. I've got a tree. So again, with nature and sort of like a moon or a sun. Here's my ladder again. Moon. Hash marks. So when you look back at your art, you really can see things that you use frequently. So I sometimes do arrows. An arrow over there. Okay. And and there's a house again. So it's interesting that a lot of the words that I came up with, the symbols that I would have just drawn for them anyway, I've already included in a lot of my artwork. There's some arrows again. I notice I've got a lot of arrows going down and over. The one was kind of looping over to the side. So that's interesting. Again, I don't know what it means, but it's interesting to look through your, your art and see the symbols that you included. And it's okay if you don't know what they mean. You don't have to know. I think that healing can happen and, and meaning can be there even if you don't consciously know the meaning. You may come to learn the meaning at some time or it may sort of always be a mystery and, and that can be okay. I don't think you can see this one or you can't see these details maybe so well on camera but it has I've made some like roots or little faint lines that look like plant roots, tree roots and this is all sort of emerging from her body. Actually now that I'm looking at this I'm thinking this sort of layout might be nice for something like this where you know I have this figure and I bring it over and create some roots and that can be the symbol for plants or nature kind of thing and even also for, for mountains, this is sort of, you know, this could be sort of symbolic for mountains. You know, when you're coming up for ideas and you're in your gathering phase, you don't always have to recreate the will. You can look back at what have you already done? What have you, what marks have you made or compositions have you used that you can pull from or that you'd like to try again in a different piece? So the next step I want to take is to prime the piece with gesso. And this is not only to prime the paper, but to push back these marks and words that we've put down. So I'm going to be using white gesso, but if I do a thin layer, it will have a transparent quality so that some of these marks will still show through a bit, but we can start to push them back to start to move into our next layer.
And this is a good time while your gesso is wet. You could come in with a pencil. And I'm just using the mechanical pencil, but I don't have the lead pushed out. And you could make some marks. And I could bring back some of the mark making back through. It could give you some texture in the next layer. And then if you've made some marks into the gesso that you don't like, just come back with your, your wedge or if you're using a paintbrush, whatever it is, and just kind of take some away. Just so it's dry now, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to lightly come in and I'm going to divide my paper into thirds horizontally and vertically. So I'm not going to measure it out, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and split it into thirds. Just so that when I'm thinking about composition, I can sort of know good spots to put things, which is where your thirds intersect. So I'm going to start out with this quinacridone nickel azo gold. This is a fluid acrylic. So I was thinking that one of my things that I had in my list that I enjoyed was water, whether it was being beside a stream or being in a hot bath. So I'm going to try to sort of incorporate that symbol that way. I'm not going to have sort of like a sketched out symbol for water, but I want my colors to be very washy and watery. So that is sort of how I'm going to weave that into this piece. And come in with my pencil, create some marks on here, just do some mark making. Mark making is something that feels good to me, so I like to, to do that sort of every time I add a new layer, I like to come back on top and do some marks because again, I, I don't know what's going to peek through in the final piece and I think these marks that you add all along you usually get a few peeking through in the final piece and it usually ends up just adding some interest. My process is very much about adding layers and taking away and then adding layers and taking away. And so now I've put down all of this Nicolazzo gold, but I don't want to keep all of it. So I want to push back some of the color. What I want to do is just sort of loosely circle areas that I like. And I'll try to mostly keep those. I like that. I like this here with the ladder showing through. I think I like a lot of this up here. And just because I'm circling it and keeping it for now doesn't mean that I'm going to keep it the entire time, but it's just, I like it for now, and I'm going to keep it and see where it takes me next.
So now I need to let this layer of gesso dry. And I like working in layers and I like having this drying time between because it keeps me from, from going too fast and maybe overworking things. Not that, you know, sometimes I still definitely overwork things, but this gives me time to take a look, sit with things. I'm just looking at what might be the next layer. I'm looking at what marks I like, what areas in whatever's drying, what areas do I like, what do I want to sort of keep and focus on when I come in with the next layer. Sitting and looking and listening and letting yourself feel what the next step might be and reacting to what you put down. Okay, so the gesso is dry now. I'm getting to a point where I might want to start adding in a figure and the symbols. But first, I want to come in and tone down this yellow a bit, sort of grunge it up. I like the parts where it's more orangey, more sort of a rusty red. The parts where I thinned it out and it's more of a yellow doesn't feel quite right to me. So I thought I would bring some brown in to kind of tone down the areas of yellow. So this feels good to me for now. I'm going to let this dry and then we will move on and begin our next layer.